I thank you, Lord, for your grace. I thank you, Lord, for your love. Thank you, Father, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you for your care. Thank you for your care. Thank you so much for your care. Thank you for choosing us, for choosing me, for choosing your people out of the world, out of bondage, out of sin, out of pain, out of betrayal, out of hurt. You have taken us out, out of the sea of sin. You have pulled us out and you have drawn us close to you. I bless you. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you so much. Thank you.
Hallelujah. 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 Praise the Lord. Praise Jesus. Just lift up your hand. Let the Spirit of the Lord touch you. Let Him touch you. Let Him touch you. Let Him touch you. Let Him touch you you today. Let Him refresh you. Let Him visit you. In the name of Jesus, in the mighty name of Jesus, receive his spirit, his strength, his strength, his power, his power, his glory, his goodness, my brethren, receive now, receive, receive. Receive, 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 just receive, just receive, receive his love, just receive his love, receive his love, receive his goodness, receive now, I can see the wave of the glory of God dropping in this place like a rainfall, like a flood is coming upon you to quicken you deep within you. He wants to call the depth that is within you now. I say receive. I say receive. I say receive. God is here to touch you today. Receive. Receive. Receive his power, receive his glory, receive his goodness, receive peace, receive healing, receive when the kingdom of God come, he comes to do some things, he come to heal, he come to deliver, he come to bless. Now in the name of Jesus, I declare his blessings upon you now. I declare his blessings upon you now. I declare his power over you now. Destroying the works of witchcraft. Destroying, 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 healing you, setting you free, touching you, blessing you, filling you with his love. In the name of Jesus. 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 Jesus. Be touched. Be filled, be blessed by the Holy Ghost. Be blessed, be blessed, be blessed, be blessed, be blessed in your soul. Be filled with His fire, be filled with His presence. Be filled, be filled, be filled, be filled, be filled in our heart. Be filled right now. Be filled now. Be filled right now with His power, with His glory. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. 
There is a working of the Holy Ghost in this place. There is a working of the Holy Ghost. There is a working of the Holy Ghost in your life, in your body now. You can feel the power of God. You can feel Him. It's no secret. He's here. It's no secret. God is with us. It's no secret. His presence is here. Ooh, Haria Shata. Ta 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 ta. Ta 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 ta. Ta 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 ra ka shata. Kara ra ka shete te 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 you are God Almighty, our Lord and our King. We love you. We love you. Thank you. Thank you. I say thank you to you, Lord. You so love. You are so love. You are so love. You are so love. Thank you. 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 Hallelujah. Praise God. Just bring me that girl, the one in white. Quickly come. And then quickly come, Maria. name of Jesus. The power and the glory and his love and his goodness filling you, touching your heart, changing your heart. If your heart was hardened, receive the love of God. Receive the love of God. Receive the love of God that strengthens you. Receive it now. In the name of Jesus, Spirit of the Lord, just take over, refresh, refresh, a deep work in your heart, a deep revival, I speak that over you, a deep revival, a deep, a deep work of the Holy Ghost, a deep work of the Spirit of the Lord. Let the children not run around. Quick, man. Take it out. <coughs> Everything. 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 Everything in the name of Jesus. Everything. <coughs> Help him also. Everything. Lord. Hallelujah. Thou my everlasting portion. More than a friend or life to me, all alone, this pilgrim journey, Savior, let me walk with thee, thou my everlasting portion. More than a friend or life to me. All along this pilgrim journey, my Savior let me walk with you. Close to thee. Close to 
Jesus, our Lord, is wonderful. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. You know, God is worthy. God is worthy of our worship and is worthy of our best worship. Not just worship, best. Where your heart and your mind and your soul and your body coordinate in worship of God. He is God, Jehovah. Amen. He's the King of all kings. He is the Lord of all lords. He is the Alpha and Omega. The beginning and the end. Hallelujah. Praise God. Jehovah Sebaot. The God of the great army. Hallelujah. The Lord God of hosts. He is the El Shaddai. Jehovah El Shaddai. Jehovah Shammah. He has been before and he will be forever. His holiness is who he is. He dwell in the most holy place and around him are cherubims. The 24 elders bow before him every day, every hour, every minute, every second, casting out their crowns upon the glassy sea, saying, Holy, holy, holy is the Lord God Almighty, who was and is and is to come. And it is very important that as we, his creation, we join together with the angels and the 24 elders in worship of God. Amen. Amen. Learn to worship Him. What do you do? Learn to worship Him. What do you spend time doing? Worship God. An angel came and gave the revelation to John the Apostle. And the scripture tells us that when John saw all that, immediately bowed before the angel, and the angel rebuked him and said, I am a servant, just like you are. And then he said, worship God only. <coughs> Hallelujah. He said, worship God. An angel giving a command to the apostle of God, saying, worship God. You deserve the glory and the honor. Lord, we lift our hands in worship as we lift your holy name. You deserve the glory and the honor. Lord, we lift our hands in worship as we lift your holy name. Why don't you stand up and worship? Great, you do miracles so great. There is no one else like you. There is no one else like you. For you are great, you do miracles so great, there is no one else like you, there is no one else like you, you deserve the glory. And the honor, Lord, we lift our hands in war. Lift it up as we lift your holy name. 
You deserve the glory, yes, Lord, you and the honor, yes, Lord. Lord, we lift our hands in worship, yes, as we lift your name. You are great, you do miracles so great. There is no one else like you. There is no one else like you. For you are great. You do miracles so great. There is no one else like you. There is no one. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Amen. What do you want to say? What can you say? God is good. Hallelujah. Oh, God is good. You know, I don't know what to say, right? I really don't know what to say. I just want to tell you that I love you. <laughs> Amen. I want to tell you that I love you. Amen. I really love you. And thank you for being my brothers and my sisters. Thank you so much for loving Jesus. Thank you for giving your life to him. Thank you so much for giving your life to Jesus. Thank you for following him. I know it's hard, but you made a great test decision in your life to follow Jesus. You are a child of the promise. Hallelujah. You are a child of the king. You will live again. You will live forever. I want to say thank you. And I feel that's what God wants to say to you too. Thank you for choosing me. The Lord says, thank you for all that you commit to me. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, my children. Hallelujah. Praise God. I really don't know what to say. What I wanted to say, I don't think it's fitting. So I'm just going to speak as God would lead me to speak. Whoa, I feel the power too much. I even just want to lie down. Oh, like I want to explode inside of me. Hallelujah. Amen. I'll try again. Eh? <coughs> I don't know if God wants me to pray for people. I don't know. I just see that when I want to preach, there's nothing to say but only the power in my heart, in my stomach.
Okay, let me say this. You know, today when we were praying in the afternoon, can you just take that thing, it's irritating, that plastic thing. When we were praying in the, in the, in the, in the afternoon, when we pray, I think I shared something that was very profound, that God, that you are in the faith covenant with God, you belong to God. Amen. So you are in the faith covenant with God. And uh, it's a life covenant. It's not a one-year covenant, no six-month covenant. No, it's a lifetime covenant. Know that you are chosen out of the world to be a child of God. Amen. Hallelujah. The, that's why you become very special. Because when you, be, you become a child of God, you become special. Because you are chosen out of the sea of the lost and you are brought into his kingdom. Don't take it light. It's not a light thing. It's not a tedious thing. Amen. It cost Jesus his precious life to, to, gain, to gain you or to save you. Please hear me again. Eh? It cost Jesus life, his very own life and his soul. It cost that for him to save you and for you to be called a child of God. There was a price that was paid. We should not take it light. It wasn't a, a, a small thing. Hell shook because of this very thing. Satan lost his authority and power because of this very thing. God grant unto men second chance to life because of this very thing. And therefore the Lord does not want us to take it light. People that take the kingdom of God light, they perish. Amen? Because we saw it in the Bible, Jesus gave a lot of parables. When people did not take it serious, what happened? They perish. It is not the will of God that any of us perish. When he saved you, he meant to save you forever. When he convicted you, he liked you and he loved you and he pulled you to himself for a reason to save you from the wrath to come, which the whole world will go through. The Bible talks about the sons of disobedient, those that rejected the grace of God, which is in Christ Jesus. There is no other salvation. There is no other way. There is no other name given unto men where men can be saved except the name of Jesus. And therefore, some people will reject this grace, hoping that things are not true. But I want to tell you that those very people are lost and they've lost it. You are where omnelago. Hallelujah. Omnelago. Be grateful for the life of God inside of you. Be grateful that you can speak to God Almighty. God is not a small boy. He's a holy God. Amen? That's why the Bible says no one can see God and live. No one has seen God at any time, the Bible says. So no one can see him. Yet he has drawn us close to him through his son. This is the greatest news ever told. This is the greatest hope we have for tomorrow. Hallelujah. And therefore God wants you to take your salvation very serious. Very serious. Don't joke with it. Amen. The most thing the devil wants is to joke with this very thing. Don't joke with your salvation. Please don't. Speak to yourself again. Reconcile yourself again. The devil with his friends do not want you to know how serious this thing is. So he play you down. Making look like it's just one of those things you choose in life. It's not one of those things you choose in life. Jesus is the only way. The way to life. Hallelujah. The truth. The life. Without him, you don't have life. 
Without him, you don't have the truth. Without him, you don't have the way. So don't play it down. It's by choice. He gives you the gift of life. You do whatever you want to do with it. You can give it to dogs. You can give it back. But this is one lifetime opportunity for you to enter life. One lifetime opportunity for your soul to live forever. What can you gain in exchange for our soul? What is that that is so worth your soul? Is it is that that is fighting this very thing? What is that thing that makes God to become second in your life? What seconded Christ in you? Is it friends? Is it boyfriends? Is it TV? Soapies? Is it internet as you know it? What is that addiction? What is that thing that keep you away from seeing Jesus, worshiping Jesus, being in oneness with him? What is that, brethren? Nothing is worth this life in God. Nothing, 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 absolutely nothing. Nothing, nothing. Not even your beauty. Not your class. Sometimes people define themselves in what they dress. Not even that. Not your beauty. Sometimes you are too aware of your beauty more than being aware of God. You get it? You are too aware of your beauty more than being aware of God. You are too aware of your class, your style, more than be aware of God. These are traps that are in the way. Amen? These are traps that are in the way. Praise God. Did you hear what I said? These are traps, satanic traps, that he puts in the journey as we go. Remember, we are singing, we are just pilgrims. We are passing through this world. It's not our home at all. Never be too comfortable with this world. Never, never. Always carry it in your conscience that you are just a pilgrim in this world. This is not your home. Jesus said it himself that this world was not his. Amen, children of God. Hallelujah. Don't be too familiar with the world. Don't be too familiar with the world. You are called out of this world. Hallelujah. Make decision, appropriate decision. Worldly friends will pollute, pollute you. Let me just be honest with you. Maybe this is, I felt the Holy Ghost pricking on me when I say this. Worldly friends that you keep hanging around with, they are the reason why you are not growing spiritually. That's it. They may be nice. It's not always that they are evil, but the fact that they will not encourage you to seek God, to pray, you don't speak scriptures, that's already a sign that they will tell you worldly things that seems okay, that don't seem like they are sin, but what it does, it might just make you to be more worldly. You become more worldly conscious rather than God conscious. Hallelujah. Praise God. So it's mostly your environment plays a big role. These plants, as you see them, they don't like the sun. They flourish well in the, in the shade. You put them in the sun, the environment, they start to dry up. No matter how many or how much liters of water you place in these plants. Okay? The moment you put them, I think it's this one. Look at this. You know what happened here? Friday, uh, Sunday, 
they put it in the car, at the boot, in her car. You know, her car is like this, right? Like, um, you know, those, uh, how do you call it? SUV? Okay, so her car is an SUV. And they just put it inside the car. But because of the sun that was getting, this is the result of that. It, it's not that there is no water here. Even if you can touch it, there is water inside. You get it? It's wet. But because it was in the wrong environment, you too, there is an environment you flourish. Hallelujah. The Bible says, always being busy in the things of God because we flourish in the kingdom of our Father. Amen. That's where we flourish. That's why we are beautified. Don't become too familiar with this world. Don't do it. Don't waste the grace of God on your life. Don't waste the grace of God on your life. Don't refuse him who's speaking to you. Amen. Don't refuse him who's speaking to you. Keep away from anything that defiles your soul. It's all you have. Once you lose your soul, you've lost it all. Then you can have a good name on earth. But if you die without Christ, you are perished forever and ever and ever. And there is no return. There is no second chance. You can't say, let me give me one more time. And that's why God wants us to, to cherish what we have received from him and to guard it with all diligence because it's very fragile. You have a devil on the other side who is seeking to pollute you, to bring you down, to bring you in unbelief. And you know, today in the afternoon, God ministered to me and said, you see, the greatest sin is not all these things people do. Drinking, quata, quata, wada, wada. No. People do those things because of unbelief. When the unbelief grows in their heart, then they become sinners. You get it? You understand? You say, no, but I believe. No, 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 no. Listen. You are not sensitive. When you are not sensitive, you are, in un, in un, you are like in unbelief. When you are sensitive, you honor God. You recognize him in everything that you do. You see him. You are aware of his present. But when you become, you go in another environment where God is like, you know, you just know I'm a Christian, but you can do anything. You get it? Because of what? It, the first seed is unbelief. Why? I saw that because with the children of Israel, the Bible said it was because of unbelief. And look at what they were doing. They were sleeping around. But it started with what? Not believing God. Do you know what is to believe God? To believe God means to follow Jesus. And to do what he asks you to do. That's what it means to believe. You cannot believe if you are not a doer. Then you never believed. You get it? Hallelujah. You are a believer because you accepted the truth and you are doing what you believe. You are practicing your faith. Imagine you say you are a believer, but you don't practice your faith. You are not a believer. Because what's the difference between you? And the hidden who is there, who doesn't even know anything about God, you are actually just the same. Because all you do is putting God on your lips. That does not impress God at all. Never. Let me be, make it very clear. God is not impressed by mouth service. Never. Read in his Bible. He has said it over and over and over. There was a time the children of Israel in the book of Jeremiah, they were repenting and God said, don't repent in pretense. Don't just say words. Mean it. God is the God of a heart. I mean, he deals with our heart. That's what the Bible says. With the heart, men believe unto righteousness. With the heart. And then what you believe, you confess it. Romans 10, 9 and 10. There. Hallelujah. Praise God. With the heart, men believe. So with what do we believe? With the heart. So we don't believe with the head or with the mind. We believe with what? With the heart. And what now you believe, what do you do? You confess it out. Praise the Lord. Amen. See, when they wrote the Bible, Paul wrote the Bible, 
He was always telling people about the day of the Lord. Think about how he was preparing the Christian of old to walk carefully before God. You understand? To live holy lives unto God. To be committed unto him. That was then. How of now? When we see everything being fulfilled just as the Bible declares it. Look at how flood everywhere. Look at the earthquake becoming rampant all that. I mean, seriously. Look at the society. How it is, uh, what do you call this? Is becoming, what is the word? English people. Huh? No. Deteriorating. Oh, whoa. You get it. So look at how it is that today people, men can marry. That's very scary. That's like really out of control. Like Sodom and Gomorrah. Yet people think it's normal. Look at how many people are fighting. Educated people fighting to remove children out of people's womb. Educated, not even people in the village that are not educated. Educated doctors, educated lawyers, educated, you know. They are the ones fighting for this. Think about what is, what about their conscience. Were they not told when they were small? And the reason why they are there is because somebody did not abort them. They still, that they, they, the senses of men has been shipwrecked. He said, the Bible says that they've been hit by hot iron. <coughs> Amen. What else if Paul could warn the children, the, the Christian of that iron? Telling them how they should work. Telling them to be serious and be connected with their maker because they are not of this world. What can we tell this generation? What can we speak to this generation? When we see everything that the Bible has declared coming to pastors, saying as it was in the days of Noah, so shall it be. Wickedness will increase. And we saw that the reason why God destroyed uh, 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 Noah, that time of Noah, that that place, that time of Noah. It was simply because the Bible said wickedness. The earth became so wicked. Men's heart were so darkened with wickedness, isn't it? And then the Lord God regretted, so to say, why, like in making men. And then He said, "The men I've made, whom I love, I'm going to destroy, because God is holy. He can't look at that filth." And it says that in, as it was in the days of Noah, so shall it be in the end time. The heart of men will grow cold. People now it's just they don't care. Killing is just a normal thing. People have no mercy. You will suffer alone. No one will even care for you. This day people don't even have families. Have you noticed? People don't have families. Long time ago, when you have your rich uncle, my dear, even if you don't even know how you are connected, you just heard from parents that is your uncle. When you want to come to Windhoek, you come to that uncle. But today, it's not like that. People are complaining, people are bitter. No mercy, no kindness. The Bible says in the last day, they will become what? Lovers of themselves. They only think about themselves. What they're going to get out. That's why you see people, do you know why? This is how even treat the house of God. If I'm not getting delivered, I'm not coming. It's that spirit of, 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 of self-love. We don't come just to worship God. I'm a Christian. Church is my life. You understand? No. It's only if I'm not benefiting. If I'm benefiting, I come. If I'm okay, I'm not coming. It's the same spirit that we carry. It's the spirit of the last days. And Paul warned the Christian not to be part, to be careful, to really uh, uh, isolate the or to really separate from themselves from that type of life. Remember when also Paul wrote to Timothy, he told him about the, the life, how people are. Um, are using the kingdom of God to gain money for themselves. You understand? 
after uh, thinking that because, you know, when it, some people testify and say, God has blessed me with a big house. Now, Tim, Paul was telling Timothy and say that some people think because they get like a testimony, like a blessing, it means it is well with them with God. It's not always like that. Hallelujah. It's not because you get healed, it means you're okay with God. God is love. God can heal anyone, even a witch. God can kill a witch. It's just a witch will not go to heaven if they didn't repent. But God can heal because it is his creation. He sees, he judges differently. He knows that that witch does not know light. And that's the reason why he allows Satan to take control of him. If he cry out to his maker, the Lord is his maker, he's going to help him. The Bible says God is good to the evil, to the wicked, and to the good. He pour rain to the kind and to the unkind. Isn't it? Hallelujah. So which means that an evil person can cry out and God, I mean, you, don't you see them working in, working, having good position? God gives them even brain to study very well. Hallelujah. Because he is kind. He is love. So he blesses. That does not mean that whoever he blesses is always good or is always in the right relationship with him. No. Praise God. Doesn't mean that way. Hallelujah. Praise God. So we know that he was warning Timothy and says, stay away from these people like this. Stay away from, maybe I can read a few of them. <clears throat> Timothy. Let's read Timothy 3 then. Or 2 Timothy 3. You can hear me. You are not in the dark like that. You're okay, ne? You're okay. You don't want to come here so I can look at you nice. Oh, here. Oh, are you okay? It's just good when you know this 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 thing here. And I, when I'm talking, I, I'm I'm impacting power in you when you are when you are focusing on me. There's something comes in you. Luis, when I'm preaching and you are not focusing, you see. Let me just be honest with you. Listen very well, ne? It's not only the words that we speak that really does a great work here. It is the spirit by which I preach in. So the Bible said this word I speak, they are life and spirit. Did you hear that? The words that I speak, they are life and spirit. That's why it's very important to focus. Focus on me, my heart, like... Like, see me. You get it. When you're focusing like that, you're going to get changed. So when the, when the word of God is coming, don't allow the enemy to distract you by looking somewhere or by, you know, just being there, taking maybe your time. Don't be that way. There, you will not receive impartation. Because we don't preach by ourselves. We are sent. And what I'm speaking, this is what God wants you to hear. And so, because why I know, I know. Why do I know? I know because when I'm speaking under his influence, I know that. God backs up what he wants you to say. If you are saying things he doesn't want you to say, he will not back it up with his anointing. Then you say, what is his anointing? You, you will know what it is. Okay? You will know. Amen. So it's very important to pay attention so that as I speak, not the words I get, it, when they are entering you, they become spirit and life. Did you hear that? They become what? Spirit and life. And that is the power that transformed you. That is the power that transformed you. Hallelujah. Praise God. So you pay attention. You, 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 you don't think that I came with. No, no. Don't think about the friend that you came with. Don't think about anyone now. This is your time to receive the words from your father. He wants to speak to you. He wants to impart you. He does not want you just to remain not growing. He wants you to grow. He wants you to grow. He, the Bible says Jesus also grew in the spirit. 
and he became strong. It says the same with John. Okay? John the Baptist. It says he became he grew in the spirit and became strong. It says the child grew. So the child in you need to grow. Hallelujah. And one way you grow is through this type of impartation when the word is being injected in your spirit. When you are focused, I tell you the truth. That impartation will come upon that quick. There is a change here, here inside of you. You are getting empowered. Wise wisdom is coming in you. Understanding is coming in you. Even the power to live a Christian life will become alive in you. So that's why pay attention. Amen. Hallelujah. That's what even Paul told Timothy and said, pay attention. Hallelujah. Verse 3 says, But now, I'm in chapter 3, 2, cha 2 Timothy 3, it says, But know this, that this last, in these last days, <coughs> times will come. In this, oh, sorry. But know this, that in these last days, perilous times will come. Those are difficult times. That word perilous just means difficult times will come. For men will be lovers of themselves, lovers of money. You see, people today, you see, they fill themselves with all things. You understand? Hallelujah. Boasters, they are proud. Blasphemers, disobedient to parents, unthankful, unholy. Unthankful, unholy. Even today, people are not thankful. You do this for them, nothing, no thing. People don't think nothing. They just don't appreciate. You see, it's the spirit of the end times. You see that? Hallelujah. Unholy. They don't strive to live a holy life at all. They just don't care. They don't consider. They don't even look at it and say, oh, is this okay? Can God be happy with me wearing like this? Is it, am I okay? Is this too, maybe... This may be too tight, or, or you know, they don't think, they just go unholy. Hallelujah. Even watching, you see, when you watch an unholy film, it's like you are not aware of the holy God inside of you. Do you understand? Because if you are aware that there is somebody holy in you, you will not want to lay your. I think there's a scripture that says about not looking at the filthy things. David said, I've made a covenant with my eyes that I will not look at what? Filth. Why would David say that? Because he understood God does not like that. It defiles you. Because remember your eyes, they are the gate to your soul. And as you are watching, it's entering you. That's why I'm telling you to watch me. You get it? Hallelujah. Because as I'm preaching this truth, it's imparting you as you're watching me. Hallelujah. So when you're watching filth, what happened? It's enter you. And you begin to play God down, to play the things of, the holy things down. I can also just, this is okay, I don't think God will have a problem. He will have a problem. What do you mean? <laughs> you, you get it? He is going definitely to have a problem. With God, there is no shadow. God is either white or black. There is no in between. That's why God doesn't even like people, uh, uh, people to be lukewarm. He doesn't like that state. He said, I'll pick you out of my mouth. He just likes you to be either hot or cold. You must choose. That's why Elijah said, children of Israel, I don't know who's your God. You are just in between. You are just in between two opinions. He said, choose. If Baal is Baal, if your God is Baal, worship him. Amen. And if it's God, is your God, worship him. Which means that don't be in between. Make a choice. What do you want in this life? Who do you want to worship in this world? Lord, in this world? Make a choice. Let your election be sure. That's what Paul says. Make it very, you know, there are people that even hide from their colleague to be a bo to, that they are born again. Hey, hey, hey. Hiding your state. That you're born again from a colleague because you have read them to, you have not decided. That's what God is saying. Decide. Decide. And Joshua decided and declared before the children visited, and me and my house, we shall serve the Lord. He made a decision that for me and my house, I'll serve the Lord. 
people that are in between, you cannot make it. This is a very narrow road. I mean, very narrow. So people that are in between, there's no way you're going to make it because God will test you. The gold will be purified by fire, the Bible says. Did you hear what I'm saying? The gold, you are gold in the eyes of God. You will be purified in order to enter eternity. God cannot allow us to enter his heaven with filth. So through this purification on earth, he's purifying us for heaven. That's why most of our trials are to purify us and not to kill us. You will be tested on all levels. One day I was preaching in the zoo park. And then when I was preaching, my uncle walked there. Then I was holding the mic. And you know what I said? I said, I don't care. I will preach. You get it? Because they said that child again. You get it? But I said, no, I will preach for God is my God. It's a test for me to shrink or either to declare with boldness. <laughs> Hallelujah. Sometimes people, you are placed before people to speak who you are. You hide. That's a test. You are getting purified. The more you say, yes, I am a child of God in front of everybody, the more you become more purer. And, 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 and you become uh, 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 separated from them. Goats and sheep cannot just be together. Hallelujah. I know vampires, they like to put them together. It's wrong. Amen. So sheep have got their own place and goats have got their own place. That's why they are not one. And there is no in between. Praise God. Hallelujah. The life we have received is so real. So, so real. Take care of it. It's so real. It's so real. Jesus is in your heart. This is so real. It is Satan that lied to you and tell you that you are not really having Jesus. You are trying to have him. No, he's inside of you. If you are born again, Jesus is inside of you. Hallelujah. Praise God. Amen. Says, unthankful, unholy, unloving, unforgiving. Hey, that's why many people deal with a lot of unforgiving today. People can't forgive. Hallelujah. Slanderous, without self-control. There's no self-control. <clears throat> do you know that we apply self-control in anything that we do? Eh? Even when you are married, you have to use self-control. Eh? It's of God. Hallelujah. They over eating self-control. Some people, hey, the fridge is just one of the greatest, uh, one of their most path in the house. Not the bathroom. It's the fridge. Have you seen people like that? Hmm? Children. <laughs> they and and they overthrow okay they overthrow the faith of some nevertheless the solid foundation of god stand having this seal the lord knows those who are his and let everyone who name the name of christ depart from iniquity hallelujah praise god then verse 10 they says it says oh i read a different one but it don't worry let me go. I don't know how did I go there. But <laughs> verse 4 it says, Traitors, hand strong. Ya kukuti komit. Ya pita mamit. Head strong. Ya pita mamit. Haughty lovers of pleasure rather than lovers of God. They, if you call them for a party, they are there. If you call them for church, they've got excuse. Isn't it? Lift your hands up if you know that what I'm talking about. If you say they said, eh, oh, hangonjo, oh, hangonjo, too. They will not miss it. They will go. I'm telling you, this is how people are. But you know what? 
Say the state. Ooh, excuses. Lovers of what? Pleasure more than lovers of God. This is the end time spirit. This is how many people are. If there is a birthday party, yay! They are there. Early. Never late for such things. When it comes to God, they take their time. When the church is almost finished, they are walking in. I, I don't know. What is really in your heart? Who is first? Who is truly your God? Is it this world or is it Jehovah? Hallelujah. And then it says, having a form of godliness but deny its power. This is true. They have a form of godliness. If, check people's WhatsApp. Everybody know God in Namibia. Check their WhatsApp status. You call it. Check their WhatsApp status. Everyone is talking how God is good to them. Every, the whole Namibia is full of God. The person that God is with me, there is a man he's not married to. Why he's putting his, 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 his status there? Say, God, even the scripture, the Lord is my shepherd. Who? Shepherd. Is so God, you want to say he's shepherding you like that? Ah. You get it? Why he's putting that status on? The men or the ladies there. Showing how, how, how lovely they are in the presence of God. Liars. Amen. Liars. You find them. You see, people, we have to use self-control. I see people sometimes on Facebook. You know, I don't have Instagram, I don't, so I only have Facebook, so I can't talk. A Christian, even putting God on Facebook with a cashotty like here. <laughs> there was how, how good, wonderful the year has been with God. Liars. That you're just supposed to keep it in your phone. Know what you can put public. Amen. Know what is for public eyes and for private eyes. Hallelujah. You can see this is a spirit of lust in this person. Many people, I see them, on, on, see, you can see lust speaking loud. A lady, I, I, I feel pity for some lady. A big lady who are having kids. You are wearing like that. Where are you going? And the breast is out. Where are you going? Who deceived you? Or who hurt you? you? That's not the way you look for men, people of God. No. They are talk, you are looking for flies. Nihwa. Hallelujah. Pushes. Pushes. Sometimes I, it's, when I see them, I'm not angry, but I feel so much compassion for them. I can see this person has lost their identity. You have to respect yourself. You have to dress respectfully. Amen. Respectfully. There's always something good about people that respect themselves. You know, when I was in youth, I'm going to give a, tes a testament. When I was in youth, I didn't wear poroporos when I was in youth. That is like, I maybe between 19 there and 23, I was in the youth. Oh, no, maybe until 24. I was in the youth. A little bit 24. I was in the youth. But you know, people would say I was different from the rest of the youth. Do you know? Do you know why sometimes I would say that? Because of the way one man actually was... Let me give you now a funny one. One man was telling his girlfriend who he wants to marry, apparently, in the church, in our church. Every time... This girl will come and tell me what a boyfriend tells her about me. Say, oh, I, he just said you are so different from everyone. You know, the girl keep telling me about those things. Why was he saying that? Because of the way I handled myself. Did, how did I handle myself? I consider God in the things I was doing. Hallelujah. Even if I'm putting nails as a child of God, I have to consider the one that God can maybe allow. You understand? I have to consider the things that God will allow me, the things that will make me to look like I'm a child of God. Now, to be a child of God doesn't mean that you must wear those long robes and then you must only tie kabola, no makeup. It doesn't mean, it's just a look modest, modest, in moderation. Do you understand? 
Hallelujah. In moderate, always be mindful. Self-control we are talking about. We are not talking that you look like you are coming from 19th century. No makeup, no nothing, no, no roll or no perfume, no nails or what, no paint, these things that people put, you know. No, look beautiful. But honor God in the way you look. Always let your mark or your goal be to honor the living God in your life. Because he's looking at everything you're doing. And he sees the purpose and the motive behind your look. If it's for Thomas to see, then God knows that there you push him out. It was for Thomas, not for him. Hallelujah. Praise God. Amen. It says, having a form of godliness, but deny the, the power of Which means that these people, they say we know God, but they don't practice godliness in their life. Do you see that? They don't practice it. They just put on WhatsApp and on their Instagram and on their things. And you, you really think that a person is really having God. It's just words. And nowadays, I think people just copy things from TikTok and then they put them. It's not even their own inspiration. You understand? It's just copycat. Ah, that generation of copycat is a fake generation. Ah, Chinatown. Ah. <laughs> Chinatown, they have Nikes there in China. If you go, there's Nikes there. There's Gucci in China. Just go, you find Gucci there. No original. Everything they have, God's even, they even have iPhone in China. Yeah? You understand? That type of life is fake. Hallelujah. Praise God. It says, and from such and from such people turn away. Do you see what he tells them? What did he say? From such people do what? From such people do what? I say that again. From such people do what? He didn't say join them. What did he say? He's talking to who? To me. Even me. He's talking to me. And what does he say? Turn away from such people. So Paul is really talking to his son in the faith. Telling him to turn away from such people. People that are not holy. People that just don't care. They're trending. Okay, my That person is not telling you anything about your soul. They are always mindful of the things of the world, not of the things of God. Turn away from such people. Love your soul so much that you turn away from them. Amen. And then it says, for this It says, of those of this sort are those who creep into household and make captive of global women loaded with sin, led away by various lusts. Always learning and never able to come to the knowledge of the truth. That's very true. There are people that keep hearing the word of God. No change. Do you know why? Because they've got too many affection of different things in their heart. See, the Bible tells us that the word of God does not come to fruitfulness because of the curse of this world. Amen. A curse of this world. So the word is being preached. You are hearing it every time. No change. Because after you come out of this church, you put on your care, your worries, your things. And whatever you had in the dustbin. No meditation, no thinking, no following it up with thoughts, quietness, thankfulness. Ah, there is too much. And that's why we are in this very busy world. But I'm telling there is a remnant rising whose heart are after their God. Amen. There is a remnant whose heart are after their God and they will not give themselves to the things of this world. They will be in this world, but they will not be of this world. Hallelujah. Praise God. So, it says, keep always learning and they are not coming to the knowledge of truth because they don't, what they, when you go to the driving license, driving school, 
if they, t- they take you to a driving school today, right? And then they keep one week without driving. Uh, do you think you will ever get your license? No. It's consistent that give birth to result. Hallelujah. What does give, what give birth to result is what? Consistent. You must be consistent. So if they pour rain on me today, tomorrow I want the rain, and tomorrow I want the rain. As I grow in that, you know, the rain start, if the rain rain today, that rain is going to, I mean, if it rains today, it, if the rain fall today, that rain, which means that it's going to quickly get sucked, right? By the earth, right? But you know what? If it's rain today and tomorrow and tomorrow and tomorrow, what is going to happen? We're going to have water everywhere. <laughs> Spiritually, you're also like that. If you keep bombarding yourself with the right word of God, it's not every word. Eh? There. Like you people like it, that, that internet thing. Everybody's there. Okay? So the right word that builds you, that equips you, that empowers you, you begin to be full of the Holy Ghost and full of power. I mean, that's how growth comes. Growth comes as you consistently feel yourself. When you do like this, remember I, when I started dry, doing those, like, the guy that started with me, uh, he frustrated me. He come after three days, five days. I one day I say, hey, how do you expect me to learn? And you know the one who got me? He, the first day, it was about two weeks or three weeks, consistently driving. And that's how I learned how to drive. Hallelujah. And from that moment that I never needed any drivers, any, any, any guy, any of those teachers, or how you call those guys. Never. That was it. Because through every day, every day he would come. I became just a car, it became just easy for me to drive. But every time, that one I get my tiny intelligent name. Oh. Because every time I tell rock, you understand? So every time I have to start over, and then he is frustrated at me. No, I told you it's like this. Just think about it. It's the same with you in the spirit. So t- today you're impacted, and then you go dry up. Then tomorrow you strike again. Then you keep struggling and struggling and struggling, accusing devil and Satan, as if they truly have all the power in this world. You understand? It's simply because your consistent is the power in the spirit to take you to your destiny in God. Hallelujah. Consistent. Say consistent. Say consistent. And perseverance. Hallelujah. Praise God. I'm about to finish now. It says, verse, uh, verse, verse 10 there, but you, it says, but you have carefully followed my doctrine and manner of life. And it's good to always copy from your good things that your pastors or apostles are doing or the way you observe their life see they are consistent in God and copy that see the way they love Jesus and copy that amen see what Paul is saying but you have carefully followed my doctrine and manner of life amen See what, how they worship, you do that. See the way they are so committed to their God, you do the same. You shall get the blessing they receive. Hallelujah. Praise God. It says, uh, manner of life, purpose. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Purpose. You have carefully followed what? Purpose. What is my purpose here? My purpose is to serve God only in this earth and to love Jesus Christ. I now have to, you know, people talk about mission and, mission and vision and statement. This is my purpose. And this, my true purpose in this life, honestly speaking before you, is to love God and to serve Him. I don't have any other. That's it. And He's told me that you have carefully followed even what? My purpose. Do you see that? My purpose. What is the purpose of Paul? The purpose of Paul was to serve God. And to, that's what Paul didn't even care with death. He was so committed to Jesus. And he said, you have copied telling Timothy that I like you, my boy, or my, 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 my son, for you have copied even my purpose. 
Hallelujah. Praise God. Saying, you have copied my purpose, faith, long-suffering. Hallelujah. You are copying. See the way maybe I go through challenge and you see how God overcome. You are so getting good. Here. Hallelujah. Love, the way we practice love, perseverance, that is a vidimiko. Hallelujah. Persecution uh -huh, is also part of it. Afflictions. Uh -huh. Servant of God also go through affliction and persecution, which happened to me at Antioch and Iconian and Lystra. What persecution I endure. And out of them all, the Lord delivered me. You say all. Say all. So whatever you are going through, all of them, the Lord will deliver you too. Amen. Hallelujah. And then he continued to say, Yes, and all who desire to live godly in Christ will suffer persecution. Do you see that? You too. Sometimes it's your family. It starts there. Sometimes it's your parents. Ah, stop going to those churches. Sometimes it's your spouses. Ah, this praying of yours. Where is it coming from? Sometimes it's your colleague. They will start to say, oh, you are now a pastor, Hermati. You know? Hallelujah. Sometimes it's just your boss who start to hate you because of church. Persecution. He says that all of us will go through it. It's a way of purification. That's gold. Going in the fire to be tested. Can it stand? Hallelujah. Praise God. Then, and then it says, but evil men and imposter will grow worse and worse, deceiving and being deceived. So evil people will continue to be worse and worse. And deceiving, they are deceiving what? They are deceiving those people that are not strong in God. And you don't even know evil men and imposter. These are real people. They are not devil worshippers. They can be one of your friends. <laughs> you get it? Maybe just one of your friends is, is, is an imposter. You get it? And say so they will grow worse and worse, deceiving and being deceived. Them themselves are deceived. And they are deceiving you if you don't cut them off. But, and then it says, but you must continue in the things which you have learned and being assured of knowing from where you have learned them. And that from childhood you have known the Holy Scripture. Say, I gotta know my Bible. I gotta make time to read it. The devil is a liar. He will not keep me anymore from reading the Word of God. I have to read it. That's where my life is. Say, the Word of God, the greatest treasure. The Word of God, the greatest treasure I have on earth. Hallelujah. Praise God. And then it says, you know the Holy Scripture which is able to make you what? Wise. For salvation through faith which is in Christ Jesus. Do you see that? What does the word of God do to you? It will make you what? Wise. For what? For salvation. For ehupitho. Which means that in every situation. Do you see that? Hallelujah. So the word of God in me is the power I have. Hallelujah. Is the wisdom I have. Is the truth I have. Hallelujah. So Paul is admonishing because it's the only thing that is able to make you wise. And then he tells us that all scriptures are given by the inspiration of God. And it's profitable for doctrine, for reproof, and for correction. Do you see that? karunga. It is inspired. It's a word of God, inspired by God. Say, all scripture is given by inspiration of God. So, Hallelujah. We know that men, holy men of God wrote it. But they, they wrote it through God. God is the one that was writing through the men. Hallelujah. That's why you can put your life on it. Because it's eternal, it's powerful, it's quick, it's sharper, it's living. This word. Hallelujah. All scripture is given by inspiration of God and is profitable for doctrine. Okuronga, omarongo. For reproof, omapukururo. For correction, reproof and correction. For instruction, okukupa instruction, to, to, to instruct your life. And for in righteous, instruction in righteousness, muyuki. So when you can read it, you find what to do. And you do it well. 
Not only that you're going to do it, but you're going to do it well. Acceptable and pleasing in the sight of God. You know why? Because you are doing through by the inspiration of God. And it says his word is able to, to it's given by inspiration for, for profitable, for doctrine, reproof, correction, and for instruction in righteousness. Amen. That the man of God or the woman of God or the child of God may be complete, thoroughly equipped for every good work. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Praise God. Amen. Hallelujah. Th say thank you, Jesus, for your word, for speaking to us, for building us, for rebuking us, for instructing our heart. We receive your word tonight. We bless your name. We bless your name. Hallelujah. I can feel the Holy Spirit moving peacefully in this place. So let us bless him. Stand up. We bless your name. Almighty God, we bow before God. I give you the glory. We bow before you. We glorify your holy name. We bow before your. Sing with joy. You have received His word. We glory. I am yours and you are mine forever and ever 
and ever I shall dwell in the house of God. Thank you, Lord, for your word, for speaking to me today. Thank you, Lord, for imparting me with your spirit and power and with your word. I am thankful. I am thankful. Holy Spirit, make this word alive in me. Holy Spirit, quicken me deep within my soul to glorify Jesus, to magnify Jesus as I live every day. May Christ be magnified. May the Lord be pleased by my life. May he be pleased. May he be pleased. Holy Spirit, help me to please God. Help me to please Jesus. Help me, Lord. Help me, Lord. Help me, Lord. Help me, Lord. Help me to please Jesus. Just help me, Lord. Just help me, Lord. For this is my desire. Praise God. Hallelujah. This is my desire to worship you, Lord, with all my heart, Lord, with all my heart, I worship you. Are you blessed? Yes. Just lift up your hands. 